In this video, we're going to demystify the different file extensions that Power BI has. We're going to go through each one of them so that I can hopefully give you an understanding of what they are and how they work. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So in the most recent SQL bits, the Power BI team sort of announced this new format, the .pbir format, which from what I understand is just a different way for you to save your report formats in the Power BI projects File. If you're coming into Power BI as a beginner, I'm pretty sure that you'll be overwhelmed with the number of different extensions that will be available to you within Power BI. You'll hear some of these terms being thrown around PBIX, PBIP, PBIT, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand what they are. And we're going to go through a few examples and how to use them. So let's start with the simplest extension, which I think a lot of you will be familiar with. So when you're working on your reports in the Power BI dashboard, desktop. The default format that your reports will be saved in is the .pbix format. So when you hit save for the first time, what it will do is it will just give you an option to save into this .pbix format. And in some sense, it's a simplified way of saving your reports into files. One file, one report. Now, while the file itself is something that you can move around and even share it to other developers, you typically distribute your Power BI reports on the online version of Power BI, Power BI service. Distributing it through the Power BI service just makes it easier for you to manage the permissions and the distribution to your wider audience for your reports. However, if you have use cases where you simply just want to share this file to other developers that you might be working uh, with, you can simply just uh, share this one file to them. And as long as they have Power BI desktop installed, they should be able to open the reports that you have sent them. However, sharing PBIX files in this manner is not often recommended just because the file itself contains the semantic model and the data that you might not want to be sharing around in files like this. If you have a scenario in which you want to be sharing the files, but not the data within it, you can use the extension PBI templates dot PBIT. This PBIT file essentially contains just the structure of your report. So think about your Power Query steps, your measures, your relationships, all bundled up into this one file. And the only thing that is missing is data, which is a perfect way to kind of share your reports without sharing and compromising the data within it. Exporting your Power BI reports from desktop is actually not that difficult. So to export it into a PBIT for, into a template file, you simply need to go to File, and if you hit Export, you will have this option, Power BI Templates. And what it will do is it will create a template file for you that you can send without, as I mentioned, without the data, simply just the structure of your report. So if we just leave that empty and let's uh, create this PBIT file, and this is what it basically returns to you. So it's a fairly small file. And what it does is when you send it to your other users, it will ask them to refresh the data because this there's no data in it. And as long as they have uh, data or the data that you use in the same structure as your report expects it, they should be able to run this report no problem. If you want to learn about Power BI templates and how they work in greater detail, I did cover them in a previous video. So go check out that one if you haven't yet. Another way that you can securely share your files without your data being compromised is by using this file extension, Power BI Data Source or .pbids. This essentially lets you export your data sources as a file on its own. And it's typically used to kind of make the experience a little bit faster if you're building reports on top of a data source. So instead of sharing the data source credentials yourself, you simply provide the structure of that data source by exporting it in this format so that when you send this file to other users, when they open this report for the first time, it will ask them to authenticate using their own credentials with the data permission 
applications that they have. So how do you get started with this format? So let's start by going to File, Options and Settings, and Data Source Settings. So at the moment, we are connected to my local database, which is installed locally in my machine. If you export this to PBIDS file, as I mentioned, it will let you save it to that extension type format. So when you save that, let's have a look at what that file looks like. So this is how the file looks like. So it's a Power BI desktop data source. And uh, when you double click on it, and uh, it's not going to prompt me for anything I don't believe because this database that I'm connecting to doesn't require me to have a username and password. But in most cases, you will be prompted with a username and sort of connection type that you sh that you, you could use. So here you go. So it, it already opens up the navigator pane. So there's no need for me to kind of worry about the source or the database name or even the server name. It's automatically set up for me in this Power BI data source file. And to be completely honest with you, I have never used this file format ever when I'm building reports. However, I do acknowledge that it exists should I need it in the future. Now let's loop back to the first extension that we talked about at the beginning, the .pbix file, which as I mentioned, is a simplified way of thinking about Power BI files. So one file for one report. However, we know that is not really the case because underneath this report, lies two things. The semantic model, which is where your uh, data lies, your tables, your measures, your calculations, your relationships. And then you have the second part, which is the report. So this is where your charts live, your pages, your bookmarks. And it becomes more apparent when you publish this report or any reports in the Power BI service. You will notice that there will be two items named the same. One, one is the report and one is the semantic model. So having both your semantic model and your report into this one big file makes it a little bit difficult for collaboration, especially when you're working with a big report and you want to be working on it across multiple teams. It's very difficult to manage, at least in the past, because first, uh, there's only one file, so only one person can only be working on it at a time. Also bearing the fact that PBIX files isn't text editor friendly. So if you've ever hit edit on any of the PBIX files that exist, you will notice that a lot of the texts that you will see are compressed and is basically not readable for humans. So this is where the Power BI project file .pbip extension comes in. So this feature went into public preview a couple of months back, and it's essentially just a different way to save your files locally. So instead of saving a report into one file, which is just the PBIX file, it essentially creates two folders instead, one for your data sets, your semantic model, and one for your reports. Both of these folders contain files that are in a JSON type format, which makes it uh, readable in a lot of cases. And putting it in this format makes it easier to use source control softwares like GitHub, for example, for version control. So there's two folders, as I mentioned, that it creates. The report folder, which contains a lot of the report elements, and one is the semantic model. The semantic model parts of the Power BI projects file uses the TMSL, the tabular model scripting language, as its object model definition. And it's essentially just a way to define your table models in the JSON formats. So I'm not going to go too deep into this one. You just need to understand that the TMSL type definition is just a way to define how your tables are in this file. In February 2024, they released a new way for you to save your semantic models. The majority of your semantic model is now confined into this singular BIM file .bim file, which is kind of where this TMSL lives. So let's have a look at how this PBI project file looks like. So here we are in our report here. And as I mentioned, by default, it's PBIX file. But if you want to save into a PBI project, type format, you just need to make sure that you enable it first in the preview features. So you will find it here under PBIP save option. So make sure you have this ticked so that when you go and try to save your new reports, you will have the option to choose this PBIP type format. And just to look at what this saves, I already have a demo here to show you guys. 
So here is the file or the set of files that the PBI project file generates. So it creates this one file here, which is essentially like it is 193 bytes because the majority of your you know, your data, your report exists in these two folders. So as I mentioned, the report file, which contains a lot of these, you know, JSON file type format files. And then you also have this data set file, which the majority of the table or the TMSL lives in this model.bim file. In the latest Power BI updates, the February 2024, the Power BI team has released a new way for you to save your semantic models in the Power BI project files from TMSL into a TMDL format, tabular model definition language. So don't get confused with all of the jargons. TMSL and TMDL are both parts of the Power BI projects. It just gives you a different way to save your semantic models with kind of different additional features. So the benefit of using TMDL is that it further breaks down your model.bim file into separate folder structures. So it creates a separation from things like tables, relationships, cultures, so that you can manage them a lot easier and not in a singular model file. So let me show you how you first get started with the TMDL type format. So if you go back to the preview feature settings, so just clicking the cog icon on the bottom right, go to preview features and under the PBIP save option, you have this option to tick store semantic model using the TMDL format. So if you tick that, restart your Power BI desktop and save your file, you're, you'll notice that your semantic model will not have a BIM file and it will be replaced by a set of folders. So I'm gonna show you how that looks like because I have already sort of done that. So this is the file format that uh, I saved. So it's still a Power BI project type structure. So you will have the report and data sets, but the only difference is that when you open data sets, you won't find the mo model.bim file. It's now replaced by this definition folder, which if you double click, as you notice, there will be a bunch of files here in a TMDL type format which basically just breaks down your model. So you'll notice that for your tables, there's a separate folder and each individual file for each individual tables that you have in your semantic model. This just makes it easier to read and manage, especially if you're working in multiple teams. So you only essentially update the table that you're working with and not the whole model. Finally, we get to the .pbir, which is the Power BI report format for Power BI projects. So this is announced in the SQL bits and I saw a lot of buzz in the community around it. And don't get too confused because it's still part of the PBIP, the project type format. But instead of the semantic model, it's now on the report side of things. So it looks like it's an upgrade in how you save your report uh, files. So instead of having this JSON unintelligible format, it will create some sort of structure that is easily readable and easily manageable in text editor. So I saw a preview of it on a presentation slide and it looks like it will allow you to do things like move visuals or pages from one report to another, which is a huge plus because it's something that has never really existed in Power BI before. So I think this will be a good feature to cover once it's officially released. And that's really it for this video. I hope I covered all of the extension types that Power BI uses, you know, when you're saving your reports from Power BI desktop. If you think that I've missed something, let me know in the comment section box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.